Hello students, after completing 16 problems, I hope you understood how to make the liquidator's final statement of account. Starting problems we have done on statement of affairs, then we have start preparing liquidator's final statement of account. The main calculations are regarding liquidator's remuneration. So hope you are confident in solving the problems on liquidator's final statement of account. Now see the 17th problem. Problem number 17, I am reading out. You hope, I am expecting that you are having a printout of the problems. The balance sheet of Bad Luck Limited as on 31st December 2001 was as follows. 8,000 preference shares of rupees 10 each, 80,000. 12,000 equity shares of rupees 10 each, 1 lakh 20,000. Bank loan 4 lakh, 8% debenture 1 lakh, interest due on debenture 8,000. That means along with the debentures, interest outstanding on debenture has to be paid. Then we have creditors. If nothing is given, we assume unsecured creditors. Then land and building, other fixed assets, stock, debtors, profit and loss account. PL account is given on asset side, just ignore. That is accumulated loss. The company went into liquidation on that debt, prepare liquidators final statement of account after taking into account the following. Liquidation expenses 3000 and liquidators remuneration is 10,000. This in this problem, liquidators remuneration is directly given, no need to calculate separately in working notes. The liquidation expense and liquidators remuneration both are directly given, take it on the credit side. Then bank loan was secured by pledging stock. Here, secured creditor. Bank loan is secured by pledging the stock. That means stock should not be taken here on asset side because stock we have handed it over to the bank. The bank will sell away the stock, they realize the money, take his own bank loan amount and the remaining amount will be refunded, will be returned back to the liquidator. Now debentures and interest thereon are secured by floating charge on all the assets. Then fixed assets were realized at book values and current assets at 80% of book values. The fixed assets are realized at book values. So whatever balance sheet values are the land and building 25,000, other fixed asset 2 lakh. The same amount we are realizing. Whereas current assets we are realizing only 80%. Stock, 5 lakh 25,000 is the book value. So 80% of 5 lakh 25,000, you calculate you will get 4 lakh 20,000. So 4 lakh 20,000 is the realizable value of stock. But stock already we have pledged with the bank. Bank loan is there. So how much is the bank loan on the liability side? 4 lakh. The banker will sell away the stock at 4 lakh 20,000. Take back their money of 4 lakh rupees loan amount. And remaining 20,000 rupees will be returned back to the liquid data. Then debtors 1 lakh rupees are given. But 80% of current assets are realizable. So 80% of 1 lakh 80,000 will be realized from debtors. PL account, you know, that's all. So comparatively, this problem is very, very simple. No working notes are required. Everything is given. Liquid as final statement of account, receipts, assets realized. Land and building, 25,000. Other fixed asset, 2 lakh. Same book values. The fixed assets are realized at the book values. The balance sheet major value is same values. Then debtors. Debtor is a current asset. It is given that current assets will realize 80%. So 80% of 1 lakh, 80,000. Now stock, one more current asset is the stock, but stock was pledged with the bank for bank loan. So how much? Surplus from fully secured creditors. Stock, 80% of 5 lakh, 25,000, 4 lakh, 20,000. So stock will realize 4 lakh, 20,000. Out of which bank loan is 4 lakh rupees. So how much surplus we will realize? 20,000. The total of the receipts are 3 lakh, 25,000. Receipts or not payments. Liquidated as remuneration directly given in the problem 10,000. Liquidation expense 3,000 given. Debenture holders. Debentures are given 1 lakh rupees and interest outstanding on debentures 8,000. So at the time of liquidation, the liquidator will pay full amount to debenture holders as well as their interest. 1 lakh 8,000. Preferential creditors are not there in our problem right now. Then unsecured creditor. Whatever creditors are there, fully unsecured and full amount. 2 lakh rupees are given in the balance sheet creditors. And complete 2 lakh rupees, the company is in a position to pay. That means the company is a solvent company. 
द कंपनी इज इन ए पोजिशन टू पे मेक फुल पेमेंट टू अनसिक्योर्ड क्रेडिटर्स आफ्टर मेकिंग द पेमेंट टू अनसिक्योर्ड क्रेडिटर्स सम अमाउंट इज स्टिल लेफ्ट एंड दैट अमाउंट विल बी रीपेड टू प्रेफरेंस शेयर होल्डर्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द सरप्लस अमाउंट विल बी रिटर्न टू प्रेफरेंस शेयर होल्डर्स after paying the whole amount of preference share capital then if any amount is left then it will go to equity shareholders otherwise equity shareholders will not get anything but here from 3 lakh 25000 subtract 10000 3000 1 lakh 8000 and 2 lakh after 2 lakh you are getting only 4000 rupees remaining balancing figure so this 4000 rupees should be returned back to preference shareholders equity shareholders nothing they will get even the preference shareholders they are not getting the whole amount they are getting only 4000 rupees the remaining amount the balancing figure preference shareholders so this is the problem this is the liquidated as final statement of account of 17th problem now you see the 18th problem the following other details regarding misfortune limited which went into voluntary liquidation Share capital eight percent preference shares four thousand of hundred each. So four thousand into hundred four lakh rupees preference share capital. Ten thousand equity share of hundred each rupees sixty paid up. Assets including building realized eight lakh forty thousand. Liquidation expenses amounted to thirty thousand. So assets including building will realize eight lakh forty thousand. The building amount is also included in eight lakh forty thousand. The company has taken a loan of one lakh rupees from Patel against the mortgage of building that realized to one lakh sixty one thousand. Actually, building we have pledged, we have mortgaged, but from Patel by taking a loan from Patel, loan taken from Patel one lakh, and the building realized to one lakh sixty one thousand. So we are getting sixty one thousand surplus from fully secured capital. But this one lakh sixty one thousand building. Value that is included in other current other assets, assets including building for eight lakh forty thousand. So from eight lakh forty thousand, first we deduct one lakh sixty one thousand because that one lakh sixty thousand is of building and building already we have given as mortgage. So eight lakh forty thousand minus one lakh sixty one thousand. These are the assets realized. And from one lakh sixty thousand sixty one thousand, subtract one lakh rupees. That is loan from Patel. Remaining sixty-one thousand is the surplus from fully secured credit. Now, salaries of eight clerks for four months at three hundred each per month, and salary of eight peons for three months at one fifty each per month are outstanding. Salary and wages outstanding for workers and employees are preferential creditors. In the theory. i explained you in detail regarding what are the examples of preferential creditors the preferential creditors includes the salaries and wages due to employees and workers not exceeding 4 months in the immediately preceding 12 months before the date of winding up so before the date of winding up in that 12 months period maximum 4 months salary will be preferential remaining salary if it is due it will become unsecured so here the salary is due for 4 months so completely we can take it as preferential creditors so how many eight clerks are there each clerk 4 months salary and monthly salary is 300 rupees monthly salary is 300 rupees for 4 months for eight clerks so we multiply eight clerks into 4 months into rupees 300 we'll get 9600 this is the clerks uh, salaries of the clerk outstanding this is preferential similarly eight peons for 3 months at rupees 150 each per month so we multiply eight peons into 3 months into 150 rupees that will also become preferential then these two are in addition the company books show the creditors worth rupees 174800 these creditors are unsecured creditors then prepare liquidated as final statement of receipts and payments that's it it's very simple again assets realized excluding building excluding building that means 8 lakh 40000 that amount is given that includes building also so we have to segregate we have to separate 
So apart from building, how much assets realized? 6,71,000. minus 161. Okay, building already pledged. Rakha diye hai. Patel ke paas se loan liye the. Patel ko building ka documents de diye. Right? Now, building value is 1,61,000. Due to creditor, due to Patel is 1,00. So 1,61,000 minus 1,61,000 we are getting the surplus from building. So total receipt 7,40,000. Now we'll start making the payment. Liquidators remuneration. In this problem, there is no mention regarding liquidators remuneration. So I'm putting just a dash. Then liquidation expense are given 30,000. Debenture holders not given in the problem. We don't have any debenture holders. Now, preferential creditors are salaries of clerks and salaries of peers. So, there is a provision in Companies Act regarding how much is preferential. Right? So, 8 clerks, 4 months, 300 per month. 9,600 is the clerks' salaries, outstanding preferential. Similarly, salaries of peon. 8 peons are there, 3 months salary, 150 per month. So, totally 3,600 rupees are outstanding salary of peons. This is also preferential. So these two are preferential creditors. Unsecured creditor 1,74,800 given in the problem. The company is solvent company because the company has sufficient funds to make the payment fully to unsecured creditors. Then preferential bills. After making to all outside parties unsecured creditors, the remaining amount belongs to preferential shareholders. Uh, sorry, shareholders. So among shareholders also, first of all, the amount should be paid to preference shareholders. Remaining amount will go to equity shareholders. So here preference shareholders, they will get 4 lakh rupees. It is given preference share capital, 4,000 shares of rupees, 100 each, 4 lakh. Then remaining, still remaining amount is there. That remaining amount goes to equity shareholders. So balancing figure is 1,22,000. From this 7,40,000, subtract minus 30,000. Minus 9600 minus 3600 minus 174800 minus 4 lakh. After subtracting all the payments, remaining balance is 122000 and this will be paid to equity shareholders. Balancing figure. So, how much each equity shareholder will get? 12 rupees 20 paisa. How 12 rupees 20 paisa? The total amount is 122000 and how many shares are given? Equity shares. 10,000 shares are given in the problem. So, 1,22,000 rupees remaining. This should be distributed among 12,000 shares. Uh, sorry, 10,000 shares. So, 1,22,000 divided by 10,000 shares. Each share will get 12 rupees 20 paisa. That's all. These two problems, hope, are very simple. No complication, no working notes are required. Everything can be written in the liquidated as final statement of account <coughs> required us final statement of account everything we have shown hope you understood it we have completed problem number 18Secured creditors are 20,000. Securities realized are 25,000. So securities value is 25,000. Whereas amount due to creditors are 20,000. 5,000 rupees surplus. Preferential creditors are 600. Unsecured creditors are 30,500. Liquidators out of pocket expenses amounted to 252. The so liquidation expenses are 252. The liquidator is entitled to a remuneration of 3% on amount realized, including securities in the hands of creditors. So while calculating liquidator's remuneration, we have to calculate 3% on all assets. Assets which are realized by himself and assets we are realized, which are realized by fully secured creditors. Dono assets ko mila kar uska 3% calculate karenge liquidator's remuneration. And 1.5% on the amount distributed to unsecured creditors. 1.5% 1 1 on the amount distributed among unsecured creditors. And remember, unsecured creditors must include preferential creditors also. The various assets excluding security in the hands of secured creditor realized 26,000. The liquidator has sold all the assets and realized 26,000. 
apart from that security which is in the hands of secured creditors. Prepare liquid loss account showing the distribution. It's very simple. No complication, nothing. Straightforward problem. Two assets realized 26,000. The assets which are sold by the liquid data realized 26,000. Assets in the hands of fully secured creditor 25,000. Pachis is our opaque assets fully secured creditors ke hands me. Now, we have 25,000 realized, we have 20,000 due to creditors 20,000. Remaining 5,000 rupees surplus, this will be handed over to the liquidator. Now, liquidator is totally having 31,000 for payment. Now, liquidator's remuneration we have to calculate in working note. Then, liquidation expense 250 to given, dependent holders are not given in the problem, preferential creditors are given 600. Now, finally, we have to pay to unsecured creditor. That we have to see afterwards. That means after calculating liquid data's remuneration, then only we'll get the balancing fee. Right? So first, the complications are regarding calculation of liquid data's remuneration. 3% on amount realized, including the value of security in the hands of fully secured credit. That's the wording given in the problem. So 3% on assets realized. Assets realized are 26,000 by himself. Liquid data khud bech ka 26,000 rupees realized ka liya. Apart from that, 25,000 rupees is the value of security realized by fully secured creditor. That should also be included because problem is diya hai. Agar wo problem is sentence nahi deta, to we would have calculated 3% of 26,000 only. But specifically it is given in the problem, including the assets in the hands of fully secured creditor. That's why we have to add up 26,000 plus 25,000. So 26,000 plus 25,000, 51,000. 51,000 into 3%, you will get 1,530. This is the liquidated remuneration on assets realized. Second, 1.5% on amount paid to preferential creditors. Nothing is given. Specifically, only it is given that 1.5% on amount paid to unsecured creditor. So for calculating liquidated remuneration, we assume Preferential, preferential creditors also are unsecured. So 1.5% of 600, it comes to 9 rupees. Now 1.5% on amount paid to unsecured creditor. We don't know whether the company is solvent or insolvent. That we have to find out in working note number 2. Accordingly, we can get how much is the remuneration on payment made to unsecured creditor. So that's why I have written here working note number two. Now come to working note number two. Assets realized are 31,000. Now payments are liquidated our remuneration till now up to this point. 1530 plus 9, 1539. Liquidation expense 252. Preferential creditors are 600. So total payments are 2391. Subtract 2391 from 31,000, you'll get 28,609. So at present, before making any payment to unsecured creditors, the amount left is 28,609. How much is the amount due to unsecured creditors given in the problem? 30,500. The company is insolvent. The company is not in a position to make full payment to unsecured creditor. The company is insolvent. The liquidated remuneration is equal to a net amount available into rate divided by 100 plus rate. The net amount available is 28,609 into rate is 1.5 percent divided by 100 plus rate 100 plus 1.5 1 not 1 1.5 1 1 1 so you will get 422.79 round it off to 423 so 423 is the remuneration of liquid on amount paid to unsecured creditor now I am taking this 423 here 423 here, this is the amount, the remuneration on amount paid to unsecured creditor. Now we'll find out the total 1530 plus 9 plus 423. That is equal to 1962. So 1962. This is the liquid remuneration. And this 1962 should be taken here. Right? Now we got all the items. Now simply you have to find out the balancing figure. Take the total 31,000. 31,000 minus 1962 minus 252 minus 600. The balancing figure is 28,186. This much is the amount left after paying all. 
and this will be paid to unsecured creditor. Actually, unsecured creditor are 30,500, but they are getting only 28,186. The remaining is the loss to unsecured creditor. That's it. So this is the liquidator's final statement of account, problem number 19. Now, see the problem number 20. The position of valueless limited on its liquidation is as under issued and paid up capital 3011% preference shares of 100 each fully paid 3000 into 100 means 3 lakh 3 lakh rupees is the preference share capital 11% is the dividend 3000 equity share of 100 each fully called up and 1000 equity share of 50 each rupees 30 per share called up here are two, uh, two different classes of shares here. First 3000 A class share, 100 rupees per share and the company has fully called up, complete 100 rupees. B class share, 1000 equity share of 50 rupees each and company has called up only 30 rupees, still 20 rupees is due. That means the liquidator's job is to make some justification among these equity shareholders. Then calls in arrear are 10,000. So we must make the assumption that this calls in arrear are received by the liquidator. Jo bhi calls in arrear hai wo paise aage. Ye assumption. That will be taken on the debit side. Then preference dividend are in arrear for one year. The preference dividend is 11% of 3 lakh. 3 lakh rupees is the preference share capital. 11% dividend. So 33,000 rupees are the preference dividend outstanding arrear. Amount left after discharging all liabilities 4,13,000. The remaining amount left in the hands of the liquidator after making all the liabilities. He has already paid liquidator remuneration, he has paid liquidation expenses, he has paid, he has paid debenture holders, he has paid unsecured creditor. That means company is solvent. The company has settled the account of all outside parties. After making the payment, the liquidator is having 4,13,000 left. And this 4,13,000 should be used in making the payment to shareholders. So, shareholders could be paise kaisa pay karenge? First, the amount should be paid to preference shareholders. Preference share capital should be paid and arrears of preference dividend. Articles of association of the company provide for payment of preference dividend in arrears in priority to any return of equity capital. So in the articles of association of the company, it is specified that at the time of winding up of the dividend, uh, the time of winding up of the company, any arrears of preference dividend must be paid before any return of capital to equity shareholders. So we have to pay 33,000 dividend. So 3 lakh rupees preference share capital, 33,000 rupees preference dividend must be repaid before making any return of capital to equity shareholders. You are required to prepare liquidators final statement of account showing available information. <coughs> First of all, we have two classes of shares. First, 3000 equity share of 100 each fully called and paid up. Second class, 1000 equity share of 50 rupees each, 30 per share called. So we'll make an assumption that the liquidator has made a notional call to convert the partly paid shares into fully paid. 30 rupees is the face value. The shareholder has paid 30 rupees uh, 50 rupees is the face value the shareholder has paid 30 rupees 20 rupees are due so we'll make the assumption that 20 rupees has been called up per share so 1000 into 20 20000 now see here liquidator's final statement of account amount realized 4 lakh 13000 is the remaining amount calls in arrear 10000 rupees are calls in arrear we assume that calls in arrear has been received now now, calls on shares made now, notional call. Just now I told you, if there are any partly paid shares, convert that into fully paid by making a notional call. Imaginary call karenge, 20 rupees aane ka hai, 1000 shares ke upar. So 1000 into 20, 20,000 rupees has been received. Has been received. Now come to payment side, by preference share capital, 3 lakh. By preference dividend in arrears, 11% of 3 lakh 33,000. So, pilot payment kisko karna hai? Preference share capital ko dividend ke saath. Payment kar di. Now, we have to settle the account of equity shareholders on an equitable basis. So, uske liye 
देखेंगे हाउ मच इज द फंड अवेलेबल हाउ मच इज द डिफिशियंसी अमाउंट अवेलेबल फोर लैख थर्टीन थाउजेंड प्लस टेन थाउजेंड प्लस ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड फोर थर्टीन प्लस टेन प्लस ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड फोर लैख फोर्टी थ्री डोंट सी दिस टेन थाउजेंड दिस वन लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड वी हैव टू मेक द सेटलमेंट लास्टली वी आर मेकिंग द सेटलमेंट ऑफ दिस टू इग्नोरिंग दिस टू वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू राइट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी आर गोइंग टू टेक टू ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड तो टोटल अमाउंट फोर लैख फोर्टी थ्री थाउजेंड माइनस पेमेंट्स पेमेंट्स आर मेड टू सॉरी प्रेफरेंस शेयर होल्डर्स प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल थ्री लैख डिविडेंड थर्टी थ्री थ्री लैख थर्टी थ्री थाउजेंड टोटल पेमेंट नाउ अमाउंट रिमेनिंग अमाउंट अवेलेबल फोर फोर्टी थ्री माइनस थ्री थर्टी थ्री वन लैख टेन थाउजेंड वन लैख टेन थाउजेंड इज द रिमेनिंग अमाउंट लेफ्ट फॉर इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर्स Now, how much is the total amount due to equity shareholders? Amount required for equity share capital: three thousand shares of hundred each, three lakh; one thousand shares of rupees fifty each, fifty thousand. Because we have converted notionally, we have made the call of twenty rupees, and we assume that twenty thousand rupees has been received. So, total amount three lakh fifty thousand. Three lakh fifty thousand rupees is the total amount required for repayment of capital of equity shareholders. Not total deficiency. They require three lakh fifty thousand, but having how much? One lakh ten thousand. Out of three lakh fifty thousand, the company, the liquidator, is having only one lakh ten thousand. So deficiency, three lakh fifty thousand minus one lakh ten thousand, two lakh forty thousand is the deficiency, total deficiency. And this deficiency will be borne by the equity shareholders, all equity shareholders. So how many equity shareholders we have? Three thousand and one thousand, four thousand equity shares we have. So total deficiency two lakh forty thousand divided by four thousand. Each share deficiency comes to sixty rupees. Each share sixty rupees deficiency. Now rupees ten should be called on one thousand shares. One share के ऊपर sixty rupees का deficiency है. अब B class share, B class share जो है one thousand shares है. और वो लोग का पेड अप अमाउंट फिफ्टी रुपीज ही है दे हैव पेड ओनली फिफ्टी रुपीज डेफिशियंसी कम्स टू सिक्सटी रुपीज सिक्सटी रुपीज का शॉर्टेज हो रहा जबकि वो लोग पेमेंट करे हैं बी क्लास शेयर ओनली फिफ्टी रुपीज तो टेन रुपीज शुड बी कॉल्ड ऑन वन थाउजेंड शेयर ऑन वन थाउजेंड शेयर टेन रुपीज शुड बी कॉल्ड द पेड अप वैल्यू इज ओनली फिफ्टी रुपीज Rupees ten should be called on one thousand shares. Rupees fifty paid. So, if ten rupees call, so money is coming. Receipt side. To calls on contributor is required. One thousand shares. One thousand shares into ten. Ten thousand rupees will be recovered from B class share. Now, A class share will come. A class share three thousand shares are there. The each share paid up value is one hundred rupees. Hundred rupees they have paid per share. On how many shares? Three thousand shares. Deficiency per share comes to sixty rupees. So hundred rupees pay कर दिए. अब deficiency sixty rupees हो रहा. तो hundred minus sixty, forty rupees the company should repay to A class shareholders. So hundred minus sixty, forty rupees. Per share forty rupees should be returned. On three thousand shares, so rupees forty should be returned on three thousand shares. Rupees hundred paid up. जो hundred rupees paid up है उसको चालीस रुपए एक share के हिसाब से वापस कर दो. तो three thousand into forty one lakh twenty thousand by equity shareholders three thousand shares into forty one lakh twenty. तो A class shareholders को one lakh twenty thousand return करना और B class shareholders के पास से ten thousand rupees Call up karma. In this way, the account will be settled. The total of the receipts four fifty three, payments four fifty. Talent. That's all. This is the end of problem number twenty.